Well, a PhD student has to have the technical background to, in the area of study, which, which is a given if they're, if they're applying. But what I like to see is PhD students who are enthusiastic about the topic that, that they're going to be studying and are ready to get going on it and, and genuinely want to push the frontiers of knowledge. And they want to go out and share it. You're looking for some sort of spark of, um, of independent thought. Sometimes that's quite difficult to tell because, of course, bright students that come out of degrees, they're often, uh, all of us, we're kind of, we're given problems we know there are solutions to and we get good at solving them, a bit like doing crosswords. But when you're doing research, it's different because the first thing you have to do is work out what the puzzle is. You know, it's identifying the question is, in research is, is more important than identifying the answer because um, there are lots of questions that are not interesting. And there are lots of questions that are interesting, but just don't have very easy answers. And having that instinct for sort of almost like an entrepreneurial ship, actually, with ideas is this is a question that's worth answering that someone else cares about other than me and which can be answered. That's the real thing. So I, I look for a kind of spark. Uh, well, usually yeah, um, you're looking for a strong academic record at undergraduate. Um, uh, increasingly, people with uh, master's level um, qualifications. Um, so here at Exeter we have a four-year program in mathematics and those students tend to be the ones who are the good uh, students who come along. Um, people who can communicate. Um, this is very useful um, because eventually you will have to become a scientist, you have to write a thesis, uh, you have to go to people and talk about your work. So, so really the ones who have the good academic record and, and are, are good at communicating with me are, are the people who are most likely to succeed, I think. I have got my fingers burnt by going for people that I, uh, speak well, and actually that turns out not to be a very good way to assess PhD students, people that are very good at communicating. Um, that does, it becomes part of their scientific career, but when you're doing a PhD, you're really looking for someone who's going to really focus on what they're doing, connect to some extent, but actually uh, have a real drive to understand their problem. You know, so I, I these days I look for people that are um, are quite focused, but also have a kind of drive to understand things. They kind of get research; it excites them. Not everyone does. I mean, some people do research because they think this is sort of what we do. I'm a clever. I did a got a good degree. I'm going to do a PhD, and they just think they never really get it. And never no light goes on. At no point do they either think this is really frustrating, which is okay. <laughs> it should be frustrating, or this is really exciting. They just think oh, it's a bit boring. This. And they're not cut out for research, they're bright people, they're not cut out for research. But the people that are cut out for it, you can see it and it emerges generally in the first year, you start to see a sort of sparkle in their eye when they're onto something and then you think, okay, they've, they've got what it takes to be a researcher. Now that layer between 10 kilometers and 50 kilometers in altitude is what we call the stratosphere. And it accounts for almost the entirety of the remaining mass of the atmosphere. So yeah, let's see if I can remember this all. Um, if you want more Battle Front videos with John and I just talking about stuff, then please comment below. Uh, make sure you go and look at that singing playlist of, of choral music about Christmas. Comment below with which one piece is your favourite. You know, just have a listen to a few on shuffle.